Hello. Uh, yes, you can go in another team.
Hello and welcome back to all. I hope all are back from the lunch break. Guys, if you are back from the lunch break, please uh, raise your hands or put yes in the chat box. So I can get to know that you all are there with me. Please. Yes, I am getting the hand raise. Yeah. Great. Please give a hand raise or put yes in the chat box. If you are back from the lunch break. Great. I can see eight of the hand raise. OK, so we will wait for more one two minutes. Then we will like I will share the special offers with you. Regarding the AZ 204. So if you are back from the lunch break, put your hands on. So I will get to know that you are back from the lunch break. Welcome back. I hope all are back from the lunch break by now. Let me share my screen so I can. Announce the discounts and offers. OK, so we have offers specially for this session. The session which we are having today. So as you know, we are providing AZ. 204 exam voucher at discounted rate that is for 3100. And if you claim the exam voucher till Monday evening, we will be giving free orientation session. With it to claim the exam voucher. You can drop the mail on my official mail ID, which is Chaitali Savant at synergetics hyphen India dot com. I will be providing the mail ID in the chat box so you can claim your exam voucher at discounted rate and get the orientation session with it. Also, we have paid batch for AZ 204 available at discounted price only at 15,000. It will be five days advanced training session starting from 10th September it includes mentoring session. And the exam voucher here you can give uh, or claim the exam re exam. You can claim if you fail once. So you can connect us uh, on Chaitali Savant at synergetic hyphen India dot com. Or you can WhatsApp us on the given number on the screen. This offer is valid till Monday evening. So do claim before Monday. 
then we are ready to arrange the one day in campus training particularly for your team or the organization minimum 50 members required for any of this fundamental courses so if you have any inquiry related to it or the offerings do connect on the given mail id or the number i will be putting it in the chat box getting a code sorry yeah somebody unmuted and because of that getting a code yeah thank you subha okay okay so am i clear to now clear to all you now hello yes yes yeah yeah okay so i will be sharing the email id and the number where you can whatsapp the whatsapp your inquiries related to this discounts and offers thank you yeah thank you sadali so do you have any other announcement no so you can that? no 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 okay. you can go ahead with the session Okay. i will just drop the mail id and the number so you can put your inquiries on that if you have any dis, uh, inquiries related to the discounts and offerings you can put on that thank you hello chetali hello yeah umesh yeah this is the recording link you share now but not opening or it will take means after end of the session we will open we will open which one a recording link now you send i mean yeah yeah it will it will be posted on the youtube channel you can't get access through it right okay. now you can't get access once it will get ready we will be putting it on our youtube channel okay okay okay, okay. thank you yeah nabjuti sir you can go ahead yeah sure okay so we'll welcome back to everyone uh, now i'm sharing one link uh, you can go to the team and you can pick up the link and you can also browse that link like i'm browsing from my browser and see that so this is the last part of this uh, exam prep uh, training uh, so concept is one thing that you would be learning by reading by knowing the different requirement and so on and so forth and subsequently you will be providing solutions and you will be building solutions not providing you will be building that solutions using cloud services based on the use cases based on the problem statement and so on and so forth but another important things in exam point of view when you talk about implementation because you may be talking about a lot of services like asp app service plan app services or stories or cdn or maybe even grid or a service bus cosmos db active directories and so on and so forth but this is something very important to all of us this is says every module that you would be learning under this course az204 you need to complete those labs hope everybody can access to this url that i am sharing with you now let us talk about the first one the first lab what we have learned so far using this two service app service and the stories there is a solutions that we can build and the implementation of this solution is given in the lab number 101 can see this is the link if i go and click that link
you will get to see complete specification of this lab from top to bottom. So in the beginning of this lab, what they are doing, they are setting the objective by creating an architecture diagram. You can read it, the problem statement, what they are talking about, but in brief, I would like to go and explain what this architecture diagram is trying to deploy. It says, we have a resource group. This is the resource group, the icon of the resource group. Inside the resource group, we have one service plan, app service plan. And in the same app service plan, we deployed one API and the web app. The both is app service. One is API and one is web app. The difference between the API and the web app is web app will have the UI public facing intent, public facing UI user interface. Web API is just a logic. That the application can consume that logic. API. But look at this architecture. They have deployed a storage also within the same resource group. So two app service, one app service plan, and one storage. So hope everyone with me and you are also browsing that. <clears throat> I do not know whether it is being shared already or not. I do not think that it is being shared in this list. OK, so whoever is asking. But what I am asking you to just to go and browse this URL and let's talk on the implementation of this URL. <clears throat> Just a minute. Now, what we are trying to do through this architecture diagram, it says any user will deploy and uh, will upload an image through this web application. The web application will have a UI user interface through which you can upload an image. But I want to store that image into the stories the blob storage, what we have learned from the storage account. Okay. But the web application, the UI, does not know how to upload an image into the storage because we need to write the code in order to interact with the stories. It means I have to use the blob stories API in my application to write the code, upload and reading the image from the underlying stories. Okay. So for that, Context, it says 
I'll be creating an API who knows how to read and write image into the storage account. And that API is being called by this application. So application is not writing code on their own. The application is taking this API, making call to an API to interact with the stories for two reasons, uploading an image and taking that image back and viewing that image back into the browser's applications, means that web application. And that is what we need to go and implement. So here we are using both the service, app service and the storage together. And a why API? Because today my web application is using this API. Tomorrow somebody else can also use this API as long as they want to talk to the storage. I don't have to rewrite the code again, all over again. I don't have to rewrite my code all over again. Because I can reuse the code across my application, whether it is a web application or mobile applications or maybe some other type of applications. Some Everybody other. can make a call to we this web API. All right. So how do I start? How do I start implementing? So in the beginning, just understand, in the beginning, just understand how implementation point of views. I say it. To work with Microsoft Azure, we need the tool we call as a Azure management tool. And we started working with Azure portal. At HTTPS. Sorry. And that is what we browse. If you see in the previous one, so we are on the portal.azure.com. This is your first management portal. It's a GUI, graphic user interface. It become easy. All these things can be done interactively one after another. But apart from that, we talk about Azure CLI. That is basically command line interface or Azure PowerShell or it could be a REST client like Fiddler or like Postman, I can make use of that also to make a REST request to manage my cloud service. Or maybe if you are a .NET developer, we can make use of a VS 2019 also as a tool to manage the cloud service. Or of course, we can make use of custom application. to manage the cloud service. These are the different tools that I can refer it. So this exam also cover little bit of CLI, command line interface. The command that we can install the tool explicitly on my local system, or we can make use of CLI from the portal itself from what we call as 
cloud cell. So this is embedded shell within the portal. This is your embedded. Within. The portal. So we are going to quickly use the cloud shell to deploy. What we are talking about this architecture. OK. Now. For completing the lab. You have some supporting files. You will find that in the GitHub. There is a link on the top right corner of this particular. So you can go and open that. Link in a different tab. And you go and download that all the code by just going into a code and download in form of zip. So it will go to the download folder. You can extract this. Because it's a zip form. And we go inside that we get a all files inside the all files. You have a lab so you can just copy the lab and put it in some. Maybe. Just deleting that. And I go inside the lab folder and the lab number one, so we get to see few folders and inside that we get few things API and the web. And another folder like images. So API and web is a two. Service that we can go and. Deploy under my subscription. And this is the diagram that they are talking about. You know, if I go there, you can see that this is the API and that is the web app. The artifacts for this web API and the web app is given to me. I don't have to write any code. It's with me. Under the folder called starter. Under the 01 folder under the lab folders. Now if I go to the API first. So I get to see this application. I can open this applications in Visual Studio and I can see how this application is being. But this application is being put in a file called api.zip. I can take this api.zip and deploy it on the cloud using the tool that I was talking about the CLI. So it means I want to create an API. And I want to go and deploy this into this API. So what we need to do, what is the sequence? In my PowerShell, so what we need to do, number one. I have to create an app service plan. Or I have to create a resource group, suppose. Then I have to go and create. App service plan. Then we have to create. Web app. Then we have to create. API app. To complete this lab, what I'm talking about, what we need it.
according to the diagram. And finally, so where we are going to use blobs. So let's get started this diagram to implementation. So first we are going to create the resource group. That is the resource group that you can see right below. So how do I do it? Because I want to introduce the CLI. That's why I'm just bringing that also. The CLI is important in context of AZ204 as a tool. We have been using portal, but without using a portal, I can also using the CLI. I can install the CLI. I can open command prompt from my system. I can fire this command from here also, the command that I'm going to write now. But I'll be using the cloud shell. So in the right top corner of my portal, I have a cloud shell. So I can just go and click it. It will ask for creating a storage account. It will just create a storage account in there pre-specified resource group because they need the storage account to mount a drive where we can write our code and to keep the log with them. They need the storage account. OK, so I'm going to get a dollar prompt. So that is a two kind of the shell that we can see PowerShell and the bash. So this one will going to give us to work with the Linux based environment and the PowerShell is going to give me the Windows based environment from where I can write command and where we can do. Where from where we can manage cloud service interactively by writing commands. So I say the what is the first command to create a resource group? Here. So I'll be giving AZ group create the name of the group. And the location L. So this is the command pretty simple to create a resource group. I just copy and paste it here. It will create a resource group by the name called lab RGs. This is the command. You see now I want to see list of group whether it got created or not. AZ stand for Azure. And I said list. And I want to see in a tabular format output hyphen O and table. So if I go and use this command. Yes, we have those resource group at this moment. The last resource group now just recently we have created lab resource group. So what next that we are going to create? We are going to create a service plan. So same command AZ. App service. Plan. Create. Name. My ASP app service plan location. Group. under which group that I want to create. And finally, SKU, I said S1, stock keeping unit, that is the pricing tier. We said standard, basic and premium. So I copy it. I paste it in the dollar prompt. So it will go and create. It's done. OK. Then what next? So I have got an ASP. 
and inside the ASP, according to the diagram, it said we create the resource group. We create an ASP. Now both web application and API is going to host in this ASP. So let's do that. Create. Web app, so how to create an web app? So I can just go say a same command. Create. Name. So we can say some some name. IMZ. Viewer. It should be unique. Plan that we have created my ASP because that is the service plan where this web application would be created. Group. So what I'm trying to say, I'm trying to create a web app with a name called this one. Inside the plan this, inside the group this, pretty simple. I don't want to mention the location because there's no point of mentioning the locations. Anyway, it is going to find that service plan. I cannot change the locations. Because I'm targeting my web applications to this ASP. So there's no, no point of providing a location. Please mute yourself. So I copy this. I'm continue doing this. So it will create this app under this particular app service plan. So in the meantime, I'll go and create. I can copy the same thing. And for API. The same command, only I will change this. API. The same resource group, same ASP, only the name is same. API also call as a web app in context of creating app service. So we go there once it is done. So this is also going to create. Now we'll be creating a storage account. Now suppose you may be wondering like, OK, this is the command. How do I remember and all these things? I do not know. Is there any intelligence that I can get while I'm writing those command to interact with my cloud services? You may be wondering, like, do I have to remember all of that? You know, sort of things. I will show you a very interesting one that you don't have to remember anything. While I'm creating a storage account. I go there. It is also done. The last thing that we are going to do. Creating the storage account. OK. I said you just need to give a command called AZ Interactive. Here. The moment you give an AZ Interactive, it will give me a workplace where I will get the intelligence. AZ is common now. You can see you don't have to type AZ again. Now what you have to type, what you want to create. I want to create a stories. It will take some time to give me the intelligence. It's still loading. So once it is done, we'll get the intelligence right there. Yeah. 
Yeah, so it, it has come in. So now we can see the intelligence. We want the stories. So I select the stories. What I want to create stories account. Create. Name. I'm just giving the name of the stories. Resource group. Automatically it is popping in. We can go through all those things. Or if I just go and say locations, L, you will get the location there. You see this, this list of available location also. So we select is TOS. We'll go with the SKU. What type of storage that I want to create? This is the locally redundant storage. And we can go on and on, but it is enough to create a storage account from the IntelliSense itself, so we don't remember anything. We are just anticipating the options and we are bringing back and putting them together within the command itself. So storage account create name of the storage account I'm about to create resource group under which storage account will go. Locations is TOS and what type of storage account that we want to create. Or maybe XST are also there. There are something like hot and cools. So I can just make it by default. It is hot only. All the data which is need to be frequently accessed, we can put inside the hot. I think this is enough to create a storage account according to our the lab implementations that we need to do. So let's press enter with this command. So what command we have written out there? So we just go and say AZ. Storage account. Create. I can make it in sort also rather than completely writing the resource group by using double hyphen, single hyphen resource group. We can say lab. The name. This is the name that I have given location. Standard LRS. And then access tier. So it's it's up to you whether you want to give an access tier or not. This is. By default, access tier would be hot. So it is done. So all is being created. I can exit from here. So coming back there, so I can see all the resources by going into this. So like, let's go to the resource group. There is a resource group called lab resource group. I can pin it to the dashboard. You can see this. I'll remove the previous one. So these are the resources. See exactly this resource is being displayed here. App service plan. API, web and storage. You can see all of them here. So what next? You just need to connect them between the connections. 
you need to get the code inside. This API and. So it says first we'll go with test of the demo. Stories we will go to the container. I'll create a container by the name called images. I'll make this container as a public access. And inside the image container, I will go and upload. The two images. So since it is a blob, public blob, I can use the URL of this image. I can go directly in the browser. I can browse it. Because I made this blob public. That's what I was talking about. Blob can be accessed. Using the rest call. I'm making a rest call using over the HTTP or HTTPS. But it should not be accessed directly. I can protect it by making it private by saying the access level is private. I'm intentionally making it public, but we can just make it private also. This is the access level of the blob stories. Images. With two images inside. Now we are going to go into the API's that API can. Talk to the. Stories according to this diagram. API can talk to the stories using the so I can go and open Visual Studio. And I'll just explain the SDK quickly because it's a developer. You need to know how you can talk from the .NET application, how you can talk to the stories. Whether it is from. API or a web application, so I can go with this lab. So starters, I go to an API, I open that project. OK, there was a question. Does it require to specify the RZ name as we are specifying in ASP? Yes, in every resource you have to go and mention the resource group because you can only deploy resource into a target resource group. You have to keep. OK, you have to keep. Informing the resource group every time whenever we create any as your resources. That is mandatory. If you go to the portal also without resource group, you won't be able to create any resource. Like suppose if you go to a create resource, you said, OK, I want to create a virtual machines. I just go with the virtual machines and create. So you have to go with the resource group without a resource. You cannot see it. it's a mandatory one. So whether you go from the portal or whether you go from the CLI, you need to mention the resource group. You cannot skip that. Question to your the question somebody asked about that. I hope you got that one. OK, so. This is my API, so you have a controller out there. It means controller you can see. And you are using some. API as your dot storage dot blob, and if you go to the. And you get package manager. You will see that what SDK that you are putting inside, what client library that you are putting inside to this. So you can just go and one more time. Yeah, so this is the install one. You can see you can read this. This is a client library enabled working with the Microsoft Azure Store blob service, storing binary and the text data. Right, so this is the API that is being used and rest of them are only code. The block service client. Block container clients. This is basically how to talk to the blob stories and it is being done in the API. 
I can right click and I can publish to directly to the cloud from Visual Studio, but I'm not going to do. There is a zip file in that folder. There is a zip file in this folder, so I will take this file into the cloud shell. So there is a file upload from the cloud shell, so I'll go to that. Folder out there. API, so I'll just pick that zip file. And upload this upload is successful. And I just go and see. This is my API zip that that need to be. That need to be deployed to the API that we have created on the cloud this API. This is the API where I want to go and get the code. Who can talk to my stories? So I can do it from Visual Studio, but I just wanted to show you. The command. Yeah, so in this. Lab somewhere they are writing that command how to take it. You will get somewhere. This is the command. I will reconfigure this command. By putting them into this. So you say deploy code. To API. This is the command. So what this command says AZ web app deployment source config the resource group. I can just make it smaller. By saying this group, my group is lab RZ, and the source of the code is this one in the zip. And I can go and say name of the API. So, what is the name of the API? We have created somewhere. This is the API name. I just copy that. I go into that same place where I got my API zip. And I can. Fire this command. Deployment is started. The same thing I can do it for. Web. Right, so only instead of API, we have to make web instead of API name, we have to use this web application name. The rest is the same. So I copy this command. So I just paste it here. Make sure that you are putting into this. This is OK, so. Oh, we do not. I do not have that code with me, so I have to upload that. So let's go to an upload. Because I need to get the web dot zip from the web folder. There is a web zip. So now we can bring back this command. And this time it is going to work. Because now we got this both the files api.zip and the web.zip both is present in the current folder. Status code has come 202. So that is fine. I can list. So we can see AZ. App service. List. Output table. So I can see the list of sorry.
So in our case, it is web app. So I can see the list of web apps so far we have. So this is what you can see this. API and the web, it is sitting inside the same ASP app service plan, my ASP. Under the same resource group. And status is running all good. Now only thing is that if you go back to the diagram. How my API will know. How my API will know that API need to talk to this stories, so I need to configure my API so I can go to the. API. This is my API. But before we configure what we want to configure the storage account, so I go to the storage account and get the connection string. So I have a connection string here. Access key. So this is the connection string of my storage account. If somebody wants to talk to the storage account, they need the connection string. I copied that connection string. And then I go back to my application because uh, sorry API API wants to talk to the storage. So I go to the configuration. And I go to the apps settings and new settings and I paste this. Connection string there as a values. OK, the, the value is against a key. So where do I get the key? So if you go to my config file. And there is a key that you can see storage connection string. I can copy it. I can paste it. So my application. I save this. My application is going to read that connection string by this code. So if you go to the controller, you will see that. Somewhere they are reading the connection string from here. This is the key of the connection string from the config files. And then they are talking to the stories and they have two. Method get and post. You can see. This is the get method and this is the post method so we can upload an image. To the blob stories, I can read an image from the blob stories. So now I want to test. This API. By going into the URL of this API where my API is available, this is the URL of the API. You can see that. Now this API is going to get me the data in form of JSON. Because it's no UI here. It is an API. We are just testing the API directly making a call to an API to read the images. From the container called images inside the blob stories inside the storage account. So if I click there this. We get it. The two images already we have uploaded. The URL of the image is being given in the form of JSON. This is a JSON document. So it means if you go to this architecture diagram again. So now my API knows how to talk to the stories. The programmatically it's being done. 
So developer has written that. You should know those code also. You will be learning like those how to talk. So that's why the code is important. Because if tomorrow if you have to modernize your application to make use of the blob storage from the cloud, you should know how to talk to the blob storage because it's not going to work entity framework anymore. You have to use the blob storage API. All right, so that is also equally important. The similarly, I can just open the other one. The web project. Okay, I, so have that a, is I have a question here, Navjati. Um, uh, uh, yeah, when you say link you operators won't work, the fundamental of link is where whatever the underlying database uh, might be, uh, we can seamlessly access using the link you queries. So that is what the fundamental behind the link you queries. We can access any SQL file or anything. We can access uh, using those uh, link you queries, XML document, anything. So when you are saying link you will not be working for blob storage and storage accounts, doesn't it violate that principle of link you, whatever we have understood? Or is there any plan of Microsoft to make it seamless with the link you also? So first thing is that link you does not work. You said that everything link you is work with the database object and XML. There are three things that link you can work. So your file system also can be converted into a XML object and link you would be work because link need everything to be treated as an object. Link yeah. basically nothing to do with the database. The link is an object model of a .NET uh, application and that is there in Java also. It's an universal. The question is that Tomorrow, if I can, hmm. tomorrow, I, I did not say that link Q word. I saying that entity framework. Entity framework does not talk about link. Entity framework is an object model who can present the database as an object in front of the .NET developer. And .NET developer takes it and use a link Q to get the details and populate in the UI. That is an additional layer, OK? You can still do the link queue. I did not mention the name called link queue. So there is no conversation in context of link queue. We are only okay. talking about APIs, OK? Understand the con context that I'm talking about. So we are not okay. talking about link queue. You can still go with the link queue and you treat them as a files or object and you can do it programmatically. <clears throat> OK. OK, so we go to the web and then we see this web application. Here. In this. Index page. It is just a web application with an HTML page. It's just a razor syntax is there, HTML plus some kind of C sharp together. But what is being done so far? It says this app. I'm talking about the web app is taking reference of this API means web app is going to make a call to an API. API is going to make a call to the storage. So it means I have to configure that also. So now we have to go to the API first. So we take this URL. And we go back to our web application and go to the configuration. And now we go to the app application settings and I paste this value where I will get my API. This is the API location, but what is the key? The API URL. So I go to the key and take it from there and paste it here. I save this. So now all the connection is being made so far. All the connection is being made. So now we need to test it and start uploading and start 
browsing this image with all the solutions. The solution is ready. In fact, they are talking about too many things. I just made everything possible in maybe 30% what they are saying. Because I did so my way rather than, you know, following all this instruction. You will be following the instruction. I'm not saying that you follow this instruction, but I have a command that to do how to do it. So I do it pretty quickly. So you also eventually will be having the command on those services that you know in and out, and you should be able to quickly deploy anything that you want to deploy. OK, so now I can go to this. So I can browse this up. Here. So commands are better than user interface. That means if we master the commands, it will be easier for us to do all these functions. Going forward, yes. Now too, you won't be able to. First, to step number one to first, you have to understand the services. Mm -hmm. That is the first thing that in what context, what service would be used. Once you are familiar with the service and you do it from the portal once. OK, because the portal will give you. All the detail at the time of creating, you can read them, you can see them, you can experience them. Once you are done with those things now, then. No looking back, you will be going back and just write a code, write your command okay so it is step by step it is not that today you have to start with the code because you have no clue you know what are the options that you are typing there because first you have to experience those options right so yeah. once the option is known to you then eventually you'll be putting eventually will be going into the tools only writing in those uh, you know the command only OK, so. So now we are ready to browse this so we can browse this application so we can see the two images we have already put in. So now I want to upload another image, for example. So I go to my image folder. So if I upload that image. I should be looking at this new image coming in. OK, now. Extending these conversations. This is fine, all done. According to this. All done. OK, so now another requirement has come into the picture. It says all the images that I have uploaded. All the images that I have uploaded in a different size. You see the different size altogether. This size, this size and this size is all are different sizes. Now application has a requirement. After uploading an image, you cannot tell people to upload an image in the same size. That is not possible. You don't have control on that. But what control you can bring into the table? You said, OK, once the image will come into the stories like blob stories, I want to resize the image into a thumbnail. And put it back to the applications that application look better. But rather than just a scattered image, I want the image to be displayed in a thumbnail. So that's how we introduce or that's how we need to start. Looking at the other service from the Microsoft Azure. So Microsoft Azure has come up with another service. Call. Function app. You go to the compute. And there is a function app. So if you click on the function app. If you 
you click on the function app, it's no function app at this moment. But let me just give you a background of the function app quickly. This is a complete module on function app, but I just wanted to give you a quick insight to the function app. Then we'll go and implement. So, as of now, we have been talking about app service plan. Right? I say you have to pay. I go with the standard. I just S1. They said you have to pay me 3K per month. That is what we are learning. The moment I create a app service plan i made a commitment to the microsoft that i'm going to pay 3k per month that is a commitment that we made after getting s1 service plan right because this service plan is going to give me cpu and other functionalities. And then we have to pay for that. Whatever they are giving, we have to pay for that. But I'm talking about a different concept. Like suppose you bought a service plan today, but till one month, you did not get any application on top of the service plan. Question is, am I going to give three keys at the end of the month? The answer is yes, you have to pay. You did not got any application. You did not run any applications inside the service plan. But you have to still pay because you don't pay for the web application. You don't pay for the web application. You only pay for the service plan. So whether you get your web application or not, it doesn't matter. Then people look up to another model. Okay, so people started talking about how can I eliminate The concept of paying without using. Because you did not use, but you still pay. And that's how they have introduced something called. Serverless computing. So what it does. It says you don't pay me until you run your code on the cloud. That is a concept. That is an architectural pattern. You don't have to create a service plan. You don't have to pay me anything. When you want to run a code like your app, like your APIs, The Microsoft is going to allocate the resource to run my code at that point in time when you want to run. You don't have to pay if you're not running the code. So to implement that concept of serverless computing, Microsoft introduced on Azure a set of services. Like Azure function is one of them. API management. Logic app. Even greet. These are all part of this AZ204. That's why I'm 
just referring to those services. In fact, you get it in Cosmos DB also. The serverless implementation. This is also part of this AZ204. So in the concept of the serverless computing, in the implementation of the serverless computing, whether I'm going with the functions or an API management, logic app, even greet or Cosmos DB, the idea is one. What is that idea? We don't pay until we use, until we run our code, until we run our application, until we store our data, until I com you, uh, consume the compute. But let us talk about the function point of view. So in the function, only one thing that we are talking about function at this moment. So I was saying that if image is being uploaded into the blob, the functions will be fired function is going to be called. So essentially the functions can be triggered using using HTTP request using timer, using blob stories, using queue, using Cosmos, etc. Using event hub, using service bus and so on and so forth. So triggering functions can be done by just making a HTTP request to a function. By setting a time that in which time interval the functions could be call automatically. So I, I say these functions need to be called in five minute interval. Or trigger like any blobs comes into the stories. I want to call a function in our case. This is the implementations that we are looking for. Right, so this is the implementation. I'm looking for that I do not want to do anything. The blob, the moment the blob has come into the stores, the moment the blob has come into the stores, I need to call this functions and the function is going to get that image and resize the image and push it back to the container and application will read at real time. Every time we refresh the application, the get method will be executed and get method will go and read images into the So I'm not going to write the actual code. You can go and write it, but I will design. I will just implement this concept. I will not write the code to resize that image, but I will create a functions. I will hook into the stories. And I will see how this function is getting executed every time we upload an image, how the function is being called. That is what we are going to see now. 
And that is what the this is about the module two of your AZ205, the functions. Serverless implementations. Serverless compute implementations using as your functions. API management, logic app, even greet Cosmos DBs. OK, there was a question. So we can automate using command. Yes, you can automate. You can write a complete script and run this. And there is one more thing says your template also. ARM template. You can write everything in JSON document and you can deploy them on the cloud. So that is also automations implementation. There are many tools that you will be learning, you know, during this course for automating the you know, your cloud provision or, or cloud deployment can be automated using different script written in different tools like PowerShell can run a script, CLI can run a script or your uh, what do you call ARM template can run a script. For provisioning one or more service together. Yes, automation is something that you can always think of using the script from those tools. All right, so now let's talk about the function part of it. So I go to and create a function. Put it in the same resource group. So I'm creating a function app with a code. We can run container also inside the function app. And then same way, so I go with the .NETs and making it .NET code 3.0 and the region that we are making it is, is TOS. operating system and we get to see the consumption. You can see the serverless. I was talking about the explaining about the serverless. So we need a storage account for uh, creating a functions. So we pick up the existing storage account that we have created last time. Networking, monitoring. So we'll create an application inside to monitor the function. This is also a service need to be explored in AZ204 to monitor. As I said before, the performance monitoring is done using application inside. So we create that function. So when you create a function app, the function app would be an empty app. We have to go and get the code inside the function like we did it in, in, in our app service plan. So I can go to that function app. This is the function app. If I go to the functions below the function app, no function as of now. So empty one, so I go and create a function. Functions can be created on portal itself. Function can be created from the Visual Studio as well as the other editors and the portal itself. We'll go with the portal rather than going into a Visual Studio and we'll look for a template to create this function. So there is a template. You can see Azure Blob Storage Tiger. That is a template. So we read this description saying that a function will be run whenever the blob is added to the specified container. 
pretty simple. We did not do any kind of orchestrations on our own. The orchestration is being done out of the box. Orchestration is being done in the out of the box. Again, that, that is what the cloud is all about. Is there any difference in performance of API or function based on reason and location? So see. Performance of the function does not based on the location slide, so I will get more performance if I. Uh, deployed in South India region or I will get less performance if I go and deployed in East US. That does not. Happen. But if your applications making a call to a functions, if your applications making a call to an API, if API in one region and function uh, API in one region and your application is another region, of course there would be a problem with the performance. So if you are uh, distributing your workload across the regions, they need to travel. It is not coming out of the same region. It is not coming from the same building. It is coming from the far away from where you want to call these functions. So in that context, you can talk about performance, but. Reason does not dictate the performance of a functions or an API. It is all about architecture. So if you are distributing, if you are putting API in one place. If you are. Putting uh, your caller is the another place, of course. If you keep different resources in the different RG and use app ID and client entity to access. Service from different as you. First thing I did not understand the questions of yours, what you are asking. So if you can elaborate that this, how come the app ID and client ID that you are talking about? This is again active directories. OK, so uh, we discussed earlier, right? Uh, yeah, that we can access. Point. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we can access resources between different resource groups. Uh, yes. Using app ID and client ID. So if we keep multiple, like if we keep our storage blob in one place and our uh, web app in one resource group, and use app ID to access the blob uh, storage from the web web, uh, is it is it going to impact the uh, performance so, or is it yeah, like, I, same? Yeah, I I got you. See. First, go back to the fundamental. You are talking about the two resource group. Now, question is the where did you create this resource group? Under the East US, or the two resource group is created in two different region. If you are creating the resource group in the same region, there is no performance issues. Right? Because you are talking to a, a service which is sitting next to you, maybe in the same building as long as it is belongs to the same region. Only they are logically in two different container, two different resource group. Resource group physically does not exist. It's just a logical boundaries. But uh, there would be a small overhead of uh, exchanging the tokens, right? Like as you explained, uh, there is a token which the which would be provided to the application, which it has to like uh, show to the next uh, no, 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 that, no, yes. no, 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 no. So go to, to the token and all these things. That is to any way an internal process that that need to be done. You get a token, you just go back to the application, whether it is in the same region or across the region, that is not going to change. Na? That would be remain out there. You uh, get me? As long as it's the same region, the performance would be the same. Na? 
See, you are talking about token. Token is not going to change if you go across the region or within a region. That is the core concept would be remain same in order to call an API or storage or whatever it may be. The token exchange, acquiring a token and yeah, going back to the. OK, so uh, I understand this this point, but now I am doubtful that if I understand this correctly. Uh, uh -huh. do, do, do the. Uh, resources inside a single resource group also require uh, some kind of authentication when they access each other, uh, like uh, app ID or something, or like inside a resource group, everything is uh, accessible to each other. No, no, no. Did we do something when we call API from the web app in the previous implementation? Have you done something here in this architecture? This is the same thing you are talking about. This API made uh, this web application call this API. Do they do something like this? What you are talking? No, no. So that's why then, and now if we if we put we put one of these resources in another mm. resource group, exactly. then we will have to have token. So that that no, is no, small no. overhead. No, no, is. no, 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 no. <laughs> that is what <laughs> I was about to say. I know that you're following question. I was about to answer that, okay. but you okay. already asked this question. If you put if you if you put this API to some other resource group, resource group is not a security boundary. Resource group is just a logical container. It does not make sense in talking in the point of security. You get me what I'm saying? Yeah, it yeah, did yeah. not ask any token the moment you take this out of this resource group. Okay. Forget about resource group. You take out of this region and put it in some other region. Then also that region is not going to ask who you are as long as you don't implement the securities in general. OK. You get me what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. OK, so. This is just a logical now. Then I have to go back and make you understand the why resource group, but it would be kind of, you know, the lengthy conversations in the real your course if you if you attend my uh, the the not like exam prep in the session so i will talk about every detail of this why resource group now do we just use the resource group because there is a lot of benefit using a resource group i'm just giving a definition it's just a logical container i can get resource from multiple region inside a single resource group OK, but there are a lot many things the resource group is going to deliver anyway. At this moment. Only you think that resource group is just a logical container. We put all the related resource inside the resource group. It become easy for managing them. OK, yeah. so we come. Yeah, so come back to the. Function. So functions that we say here is a function. Here is a functions. I said, OK, I want to create a function. So what would be the name of the functions? I can go below. There is a function name default name, but it says. You are going to talk to the stories. What would be the name of the stories? I need to connect this function with the stories, the blob stories that we are talking about stories account connections. Before that, I have to give a path. You remember our container name was images. And then we go and connect my storage account. So this is the storage account that I am connecting to. And that's it. We go and create this function. All right, so function is being deployed. We are in that blob tigger function at this moment. You can see this. We go to the code of this function. So we'll see this is just a one line of code, the plumbing code they have given, but here we have to write 
maybe 100 lines of code in order to resize that image. But before we resize an image, I want to get the reference of the blob. There is a reference of the blob. I can get it. What is the name of the blob? What is the size of the blob? I can get the URL of the blob also by writing a code here. But this is just a code to resize that image that is being read from the blobs. But the point is that how this function is going to invoke the moment I go and upload a blob. That is a trigger that I was discussing, the blob trigger. The function is going to invoke and do this process. I don't have to call these functions. I don't have to do anything these functions. So now I go back and upload an image, another image. So we'll get a new image here. This is the new image. So it means the functions need to be, in fact, the function would be called one, two, three, four times because there are four images. So I just go back to the, sorry, go to the function and we go to the monitor. But monitoring sometime, it will not give. It will take some time to fetch the data in the monitoring because monitoring tells you what happened to the function in last couple of minutes. OK, so that is what the monitoring is. Oh yes, that is given this four times the function is being called. Take a look. So if I go to the first one, what is being done? You'll get to know the name of the blob. Here that is also taking in no result, so it will take some time to go and fetch those data out there. Here we got this. There is a blob name or something like this. The size is this one. So we can keep. Right, so there's a blob names and the size is this one. So you got this complete information of the blob. It's up to you now what you want to do with that blobs because it was real time. At the same time you upload the blob. Your. Function is being called. And there are many things. The functions can be used for integration. So if I go to the integration. So now function is being integrated with the blob, but I can take the output of the function because function is a stateless. They cannot retain the data within the function like ASP or any other VMs. It's a stateless implementation. So if I go to the output, I can just go and bind. With any other outputs. You can see that. Right, so you can go and select the output to process. The function is very important because the functions also does some kind of integrations between the services. On Azure. So the scope of using function is really robust in multiple architects that the function is being extensively used. All right, so. We can see these are the service that we have created so far. And now suppose we are winding up. The session now it's four o'clock. Now. If I want to delete because I was just testing. And I was explaining at the same time. You know, I, I was just explaining and I was testing those services at the same time. Now this is not a production environment. So now I'm winding up my session, so I want to delete all of them. Suppose. 
I did not put this all the resource in the resource group. I would have been deleting them one at a time. I will go to the functions and I'll say delete. There's a delete. I will go to the web app and I'll say delete. Rather than all the tedious process, I'll go to the resource group. And I'll say delete now. That is the benefit of the resource group. Become easy for the management. Suppose I keep talking, suppose I'm deleting, but I keep talking the context of the resource group. Suppose this resource group would, would be accessed by only two people within an organization. I want to create a policy for that. Am I going to give the policy apply to all how many resources that was created in that? Approximately eight resources got created. Eight times I have to go and apply that policy by going into every single service. Rather than doing it, I can do it in one time by just applying on the group itself. Another things, whatever I have done so far, it is being put in a form of script. So it's already being deleted, but I can go to the another resource group, demo resource group that we have been using. So what we are putting inside, it is being created in a form of script. OK, you can go and say automations and you say export the template. This is the ARM template that you can see. What we have deployed in the resource group all is being recorded in the JSON format. I can download it. Tomorrow morning I can come back and redeploy this template in one go and I'm going to get everything what is there in the resource group. So there is never ending benefit of working with the resource group. It's not it is it is not only just a logical container. It's actually benefit us in different contexts going forward. So we can talk about more on that, but these are the few things that I want to mention because the resource group keep coming multiple time in questions. OK, so that is the benefit of the resource group. So I'm cleaning up all the resource group. That I don't have to pay for the resource which is not being used in production. So these are the default resource group is being created for different region altogether. So we keep deleting them. So once the delete is done, so you can see the notifications, all the resources being deleted so far. It will take some time, but you don't have to stay there. Once command is fired, the resource would be deleted in the background. Right, so that's how it is. So we can go to the dashboard, we can delete. So all this training that I'm doing in the virtual machines, I spin up my virtual machines from the cloud. This is the cloud lab VM and now my job is done. I can stop it. I only pay for these virtual machines from 10 o'clock to 4 o'clock. At that time I was running the virtual machines and I will I was explaining everything on top of these virtual machines and I'll come back to my own system. That is the power of the cloud. You provision the VM accordingly your need and do your job. And start and restart. Sajit, you are asking something. Delete the resource group. When I'm assuming when we try to recreate using template, you might not be able to bring back the config of their. Yes, of course not. Any data is not going to go get it until we put that config inside the template. So configuration also being done in the template, but in general the configurations will be not. Uh, not not part of this template like suppose I have a stories and I upload a lot of images in the stories and I take a template of this particular stories. I'm not going to get all the images. I'll get how to create that stories next time, not the data. Not the configurations. Since we are not talking about template at this moment, but, but you, you will. There is a module in module five, so you can just read that from the. 
uh, I'll read that from uh, the MOC that is being shared with this. So we are good to go and OK, so there is one more questions. Uh, what is microservice? OK. In old days, how do you develop our applications? We call as a monolithic applications. So monolithic application means. We write all. Application logic, UI application logic, data access logic. In one single project. And we go and deploy them into one single instance. Whether it is a VM or whether it is. A physical machines or whatever it may be, but today. The monolithic. Traditions has taken over by microservice. What does it mean? Your monolithic application will be broken into small tiny part. So data access logic would be one component. Business logic would be another component. UI logic would be another component. API logic would be another component. So you will be breaking your application into small tiny part and you put those small tiny part inside the container on the cloud, not on the physical machines or a virtual machines. Uh, I have so, a question to put them let in. Me finish. Uh, OK, let me finish. OK, let me finish. OK, I'll, I'll come to you. I am in the mic microservice. OK, and now when you go to the. Small tiny part that. After baking that applications into a small tiny part, so we take them to the containers and we make them up and running. Now fundamental questions why we did that. Why we put it into a microservice? Why the concept of microservice has come? It says. Suppose within an application. You only want to scale data access logic because data access logic is going to get more traffic within your application, then you need a multiple instance of this data access logic. In a monolithic applications, you have to scale the entire. Application. But in microservice. You can only scale the data access layer container. OK, so data access layer container that you can. So essentially what I'm saying, you get granular control in terms of monitoring, in terms of scaling, in terms of upgrading, in terms of. Mo uh, in terms of finding out the health and a lot many things, so you get the granular control and that's how you your application become more robust. You can get to know the nitty gritty of the applications by implementing the concept of microservice. So that is the story of a microservice in brief. But the microservice is a very big domain, so we can talk more on the microservice with an example, but this is not the day to day. Yeah, go ahead now. Whoever has asked question. Yeah, I'm done you, with the microservice. Yeah. Yeah, you said microservices are uh, to be deployed in the containers, right? So uh, I mean, instead of container, can we use the app services as we did for APIs? So is it mandatory to put them in containers or uh, as platform as service, we can make use of app services as well, which is better? As far as the concept is concept microservice, you can put anywhere, but the microservice is aligned with the container because the purpose mm -hmm. of the microservice will go for toss if you put outside of the container. But uh, in case of app services, also infrastructure is taken care by them, right? So uh, in by cloud itself, cloud provider. So why it will go for a toss if we are using a uh, app service for uh, we uh, just now we did a example where our API API was in the app services plan only, right? So uh, why why there is a need to put the microservices to containers? The, uh, I understand it's IAS 
um, service. This is a pass service. So, what I as service? What I am not. I'm, I'm anyway. So you did not then understand the whole concept of microservice. I answer. So suppose I am just asking a questions. Okay, just go back to the fundamental. I think your learning maybe you have to unlearn few things and go back to the fundamental. So yeah. we have been talking about. Uh, so uh, we talk about the ESP, right? Huh. App service plan. It's a box. It's a VM. Now suppose if you come up with the microservice using like four microservice of your application. So how many uh, how many app service plan that you will be creating? Mm. In one only we will be putting them, right? How how you will be putting in one by creating four four different application? Yeah. Uh, one web app. Uh, uh, even front end are also. Okay, okay, you are good. Okay, okay, good. Next questions. Yeah. You want only the one API to be only one application to be scaled. Then how will you are going to scale that application? Okay. Mm. <laughs> Here we are. 